What's up, everybody? The Sports Leak Podcast, back for another week. I'm the host, Alex Leak. We got Amanda on the show, as always, the co-host. And Amanda, a great week of football down and another great week on deck. Uh, we're right in the heart of the season. So much fun we, every week. Yeah, it's been one of those years that, I mean, there's so much parody, so many starting quarterbacks have gone down and we've got to see a lot of backup quarterbacks and position changes. And some of those quarterbacks have really shined. Um, so it's, it's been a fun season. Um, very, very different than I think a lot of people are expecting coming into the season. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, before we start talking about the games real quick, I want to touch on, did you see those, those quotes and that podcast stuff from Carissa Thompson? Uh, she works for Fox and Amazon prime. And a sideline reporter pretty much admitting that she would, like, make stuff up and, and you know, when the coaches didn't give her much of a response or were too late. That's, like, terrible, isn't it? Like, I don't think she realized how much she was hurting her own credibility going forward with those comments. I mean, her credibility and the credibility of, you know, the position in general, like, a lot of podcasters and announcers and stuff like this, this is their livelihood. They're trying to break into this. Like, like we are, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a tough market, but when someone who has that much of a public figure openly admits like, Oh yeah, I just bullshit my way through it sometimes. Like, come on, dude, don't undermine the, the job and the people who actually are doing it honestly. And, you know, not just making shit up just to have something to say. It's okay yeah. to say, yeah, we haven't heard anything new we don't know this is what we're hoping i don't understand why people have to just make shit up in order just to keep their mouths running yeah i mean me and you alone spent a lot of time prepping and researching and and doing our work for these episodes and for you know we're not at the big time level that she is you think about all the people on the way up and even the people on her level and above her uh, other great women sideline reporters like Andrea Kramer, Michelle Tafoya, Lisa Salters, all responded very hurt by these comments, saying it makes a mockery of the sideline reporting job. It's basically fraud, and it's and they were disgusted by her comments and and willing to to undermine all sideline reporters and their trust and credibility. It's like, I don't think she realized how big of a deal her comments were there. Yeah, I'm surprised I haven't seen more um, backlash from her employers yet. Yeah, that's the thing. I know. The Someone said they reached out, I think it was CNN, said they reached out to Fox and Amazon and haven't heard back. Hmm. Yeah, that checks. Yeah, right. And uh, in a in an era where we don't trust the media as it is, and, you know, it's not great timing and uh it just undermines a lot of people and makes her look foolish so i hope she learns her lesson from this yeah absolutely so let's get into week 11 thursday night um we were excited about this game and and uh a huge battle in the afc north both teams coming off bad losses in week 10 the ravens hanging by just a half a game in division lead and the Bengals in last place. So both teams really needed a win. Uh, the Bengals actually took a 10-7 lead in this game, but the Ravens would go on to dominate. they go up 34-13 to and win easily, 34-20. to But the big story of this game, Joe Burrow injures his wrist uh, in the first half and uh, doesn't play at all in the second half, and we learned today is out for the season with a torn tendon in his wrist, or a torn ligament, uh, game changer for the Cincinnati Bengals, huh? Yeah, that sucks. I mean, I think this game would have been, you know, the the shootout brawl that we, we were looking forward to had he stayed in the game. I mean, it was a close back and forth game until the injury. And yeah. unfortunately, we've seen a lot of starting quarterback injuries this season. Um, and some teams have a great guy waiting in the wings. I don't think Jake Browning's that guy. No, I mean, the second AFC North team, the second team in Ohio to lose their starting quarterback in a couple of days. Deshaun Watson goes down for the season. Now Joe Burrow down for the season. And this really opens up the AFC North. The Ravens have a, a really good chance at winning this division. 
And if you're a team like the Pittsburgh Steelers, it's no excuses now, right? Like two quarterbacks go down. You need to take advantage of that. Yeah, I mean, they, they have a wild card spot waiting for them if they can, you know, do what they need to do and pull off a couple more wins here. Because, I mean, yeah. that's a tight division, but it's getting a lot less tight with, you know, two starting quarterbacks down. Yeah, you talked about backups. Uh, the Jake Browning, the former Washington Husky, came in and did okay, but not enough to win the game, obviously. Um, and then they've got A.J. McCarron on their practice squad who they're elevating. So um, you're seeing it in Cleveland and you're seeing it in Cincy where there's just no replacing these star quarterbacks. Like, I know people have been kind of downplaying Deshaun Watson's talent and you know, abilities, but like you take him off the field, you're going to see the major drop off. Yeah. I think it's interesting that they're working out Joe Flacco, who, you know, has spent his time in that division um, in Cleveland. So I mean, he, that might be interesting to see him in a, in an orange Jersey. Yeah, I hope so. I think that would be, that's something the Browns need to do is make a move like that. He did work out for them and left without signing a deal. So, so maybe the workout wasn't to the Browns liking, who knows? They could still sign him later on, but nothing as of yet. So we'll see. Um, how about, uh, to me, Lamar Jackson looks so much more comfortable this year and so much more patient in that offense. And how about o Odell Beckham Jr. last night going for 116 yards receiving the most since the M NFC Championship game with the Rams before he tore his uh, ACL? So I'm glad to see him. This season, there have been games when I've completely forgotten he was on that team. Yeah. Like, he'd make, like, a four-yard catch. I'm like, oh, yeah, he does play for them because he has been so quiet. So I'm glad he's, you know, showing he still has it a bit because, I mean, he's been a pretty forgettable player on the season, honestly. Yeah, and he's starting to make a little bit more of a impact, and it was nice to see him really make a, a big impact on Thursday night. And they might need him more going forward as the Ravens lose a star player. Tight end Mark Andrews suffers a, a ankle ligament injury as well as a broken uh, a, a shatter. I forget the exact term, but a broken fibula as well. So he's out for the season. Um, big loss for the Ravens. That's Lamar Jackson's go-to guy receiving, right? Yeah, that. I mean, the game was just... It, it didn't seem like it was that scrappy, like physically, but there were some really tough losses in that game for them. Um, and yeah, it's going to yeah. be interesting to see how they fill those holes moving forward. Yeah, we saw Lamar Jackson go down with an ankle injury, but he was able to play through it. Odell Beckham Jr. hurt his sh shoulder, uh, but, you know, avoided major injury there. L Bengals linebacker Logan Wilson was involved in all three of those Ravens injuries. But I didn't see anything dirty. Some people are saying he got to get rid of the tackle that injured Mark Andrews, the hip drop tackle. I mean, at some point, I, I'm going to rely on former players to tell me if that's dirty or not. But to me, it just seemed like a tackle, right? You got to get a, these big tight ends and, and weapons down some way. Yeah, it didn't seem like he was, you know, targeting him in a malicious way. It seemed like he was just trying to get him down. And mm -hmm. the way their bodies, you know, interacted caused the injury. I don't think it was anything malicious. That didn't seem like there was any, you know, intent there to to injure or hurt. Exactly. I agree 100%. Uh, and hopefully, you know, someone said, like, like, if the goal for the NFL is to keep eliminating plays and tackles and anything that can cause an injury, you're just going to eliminate the game of football. Because injuries are have always been a part of this game, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, this is the issue with Thursday Night Football is a lot of people talk about how injuries happen on Thursdays because it's a short week and, you know, that they don't have enough time to rest and prepare and condition them, themselves for the game. There's a very simple solution to that. Yeah. Only have yeah. Thursday night games played by teams who are coming off a of bye week. Because yeah, that, that could be common them, sense. It gives them 10 days before the game and nine days after the game before their yeah. next game. They, you know, I mean, it's one game over the course of, you know, 20 days. And I just don't understand why that's not being done. Yeah. It's very simple. Like, yeah. you have teams who can play on Thursday night and you have, every team needs a bye week. Why not just 
coordinate those aspects of the schedule. Absolutely. I don't see why that's not common sense, but like we always say, common sense these days isn't so common. So, yeah. Um, and I mean, throughout the season, we've talked about that, that Baltimore um, offense. Um, Zay Flowers this week, I know technically he only registered 43 yards on his three catches, but that beautiful 68 yard touchdown reception that was called back for the stupid penalty on Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah. Um, I'm going to count that because that was a beautiful play. And that's what we've been wanting to see him do all season. Um, it did get called back. So it doesn't technically count, but it was a great play. And he's definitely coming into his own on that offense. Yeah. And that was a ticky tack call, too. I don't think that should have been flagged. So stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I was saying the flag was stupid, not Odell was stupid in that situation. Yeah, absolutely. It was stupid that it was a penalty. He wasn't stupid for the penalty, if that makes exactly. sense. Um, so, I mean, looking at the Bengals, they fall to 5-5. Five and five. They're on a two-game losing streak. Just when they were on a four-game losing streak, you know, two weeks ago. Now they're on a, on a winning streak, four-game winning streak. Now they're on a two-game losing streak. They're 5-5 five and five in a very tough division, and their star quarterback is out. I mean, for a team that went to back-to-back -back AFC championship games, uh, it looks like they're going to miss the playoffs. Tough tough year for Bengals fans. Yeah, I mean, there's only so much you can do when, you know, you're barely holding on to 500 and your starting quarterback goes out. So yeah. it kind of sucks. Yeah. Uh, for the Ravens, they improved to 8-3. Uh, they do lose Mark Andrews in the process, so we'll see how they manage that. That could be... That's not a big deal now, I don't think, but that could be a very big deal come playoffs if you got to play the Kansas City Chiefs, right? So we'll see if that, you know, an injury like that can can be the big piece that keeps you out of a Super Bowl. So we'll see if that affects the Ravens going forward. Another guy, we talked about Odell Beckham Jr. How about Jadavian Clowney, who most people would assume, and I'm shocked to look this up at his stats, He's never recorded double-digit sacks. His career high is nine and a half, and he's at six and a half so far this year. He could uh, have a career high and get to double digits for the first time in his career. Wow, good for him. Yeah, he's yeah. been pretty quiet. Like, I mean, I, he's having a good season, but there hasn't been a lot of, like, media coverage. I don't think he's really been, like, called out at the end of games or anything, but he's, I mean, he's having a good season. It's just a very quietly good season. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, uh, yeah, that's Thursday Night Football, the beginning to week 11. And let's get into our Sunday predictions. Uh, a lot of good games this week, some tough picks. Um, and I'm four games back, so I need to have a good week. And I got to catch Amanda in, in the standings here. Yeah, and for, for our listeners, I say like, we don't really discuss our picks ahead of the podcast. Like, occasionally, if it's like a close game, we'll message back and forth a little bit. But, I mean – half the time I'm picking, you know, the close games during the podcast. So it's, it's not like we're, you know, in cahoots about our picks. Um, and Alex was yeah. really hoping to have a comeback last week because we had two different games that we, we disagreed on. Um, and if he had won both of those, we would have been tied up, but alas, yeah, both I am the, uh, the better game picker. So yeah, we're not coordinated in this at all. Uh, half the time, if one of us picks one game, we're like, just to spite the other one, we pick the opposite. So yeah, because, I mean, some weeks we agree too much, but, you know. Yeah. Yep. Um, right, but, yeah. you know, this week is is kicking off with an interesting matchup. Two six and three teams. we got the Steelers coming in to Cleveland. And, you know, we just talked about Cleveland and their injury situation. What is what is your uh, take on this one? So, do rookie quarterback Dorian Thompson-Robinson going to get the start for the Browns. Uh, Pittsburgh looking for the sweep. They beat Cleveland, remember, in week two. In Pittsburgh. So an opportunity for the Steelers. We talked about, you know, quarterbacks go down. It's the Steelers' chance to take advantage of that. But the Browns' recipe to win this game is their strength. Run the rock and play defense. They got an elite defense. And Nick Chubb goes down in that Week 2 game. And since then, Jerome Ford and Kareem Hunt have both stepped up in a big way. Um, to me, the key to this game, when Dorian Thompson-Robinson made his first start this year, he threw three interceptions. So turnovers is the key to the game. Too many pass attempts for him, 36 pass attempts in that start. Don't ask him to do too much. Run the ball, play defense, make Kenny Pickett and the Steelers' offense beat you. 
I'm actually going to take the Browns to get this win at home based on their running game and their defense. Yeah, I'm actually taking the Browns here too because with that run game, I mean, this is a classic ground and pound game. Um, Kenny Pickett, he's, you know, hot and cold with his his passing games, whether or not he can connect with his receivers. So it's going to be a very heavily run game, in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. And we've got Cleveland, you know, Miles Garrett, he's tied for first in the NFL with 11 sacks. Um, so I can see... Kenny Pickett needing to to trust that that run game to get the ball out of his hands. Um, and then, I mean, on the reverse side, TJ Watt is just behind him in sacks. So I think this is going to be a give the ball to someone else and avoid the sack kind of game because they're up against two great defensive players, both quarterbacks are. Um, and, I mean, the Steelers' ground game last week had its first 200-yard game of the season. Um, so I think it's, it's going to be a, a very heavy running back focused game. Yeah, and I think the one weakness for the Steelers' defense is their run D, right? Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon both had pretty good games last week. Yeah, I think um, I think Cleveland's defense is a bit stronger than Pittsburgh's. I would rate their offenses pretty pretty similarly. Um, yeah. So I know with the Steelers' um, ground defense, they've been playing a little bit better since Cameron Hayward came back. But they lost two um, inside linebackers this week. Um, Cole Holcomb went out with a knee injury, and Quan Alexander tore his Achilles oh, um, in, the, in the back last two games. So I think uh, I think they're going to be hurting a little bit. Yeah, I missed that Quan Alexander injury. That's a big one. So yeah, good point there. And that's is kind of damning uh, our thought process here on Kenny Pickett, right? It shows our our lack of trust in Kenny Pickett. Yeah, I haven't really gotten on the bandwagon of his yet I don't I don't see anything worth calling home about I've seen some backup quarterbacks in the league this year step in and I mean completely show him up so I yeah I don't I don't trust him yet I mean yeah. it's year two still not feeling it so we'll see you know how he does down this home stretch of the season but I mean the the division is has opened up a bit so we'll see yeah, I just trust the Browns and that elite defense, and we'll see if they can get it done with that running game, some old-school football in the AFC North. Uh, let's talk my Chicago Bears going to Ford Field, the 3-7 and seven Bears at the 7-2 and two Lions. We get a much-needed kick in the ass with Justin Fields set to return after missing four games due to thumb injury. Running back Khalil Herbert expected to return as well, so two big boosts there. Um, you've been uh, all on these Lions. You're seven and two picking the Lions this year. Are you going with the Lions again at home? I am. So I'm excited for Chicago to have their offense back at full strength. Justin Fields will be a great addition. Um, and luckily his injury was a thumb injury. So, I mean, we'll see him run all over the Lions defense. I mean, they've given up 421 yards to the Chargers last week. And then back in week seven against the Ravens, over Ravens over 500 yards. Um, so I think the Lions defense is going to let him run all over them. However, the Bears defense, I don't think we'll have as much of an answer um, to that Lions offense. I mean, we saw the Lions put up, what, 41 points last week? Yeah. Um, so I think while the Lions defense is going to let Chicago do their thing, the Bears defense is going to get rolled over, completely steamrolled by the Lions. Yeah, we'll see how the Bears' defense looks against that two-headed running back attack. David Montgomery going up against his former team. Jameer Gibbs hitting, you know, his stride as a professional and balling out the last couple weeks. So uh, the Bears' defense is in for a tough test against this Lions offense. The great run-blocking offensive line behind Panay Sewell. Uh, I'm excited for Justin Fields and Khalil Herbert to be back. As a Bears fan, I can't pick against the Bears here. You know, Bears-Lions is always a, a a game where I'm very passionate about. And as a Bears fan who's been checked out for most of the season, getting a healthy Justin Fields back, playing the Lions, I can't pick against them. So my fandom is going to be this is about as passionate as I'm going to be all season long. Uh, our next three games we play at the Lions, at the Vikings, and versus the Lions. So a tough three-game stretch here in the NFC North. Give me the Chicago Bears on the road to find a way to get it done. But, uh, you know, I'm worried about that defense, and our head coach is supposed to be a defensive guy, and that just shows 
my lack of trust in that right now. I mean, defensive guy whose defense ranks 27th in points allowed. Yeah. I, just, I mean, the matchup against Detroit, who is sixth in points scored, I just see this being pretty, uh, pretty sad for that Chicago defense. But I mean, maybe Justin Fields coming back will kind of be a boost to morale and, you know, they'll, they'll pull off a, an upset. I would love to see an upset here, um, slow the Lions down a bit. But I mean, it's the Lions have been rolling this season. I mean, Jameer Gibbs has a rushing touchdown in three straight games. He's one game shy of matching the longest streak by any Lions rookie. Um, and that was Kevin Jones in 2014 and Barry Sanders in 1989. Yeah. Um, so we love that that running game um, for Detroit. I mean, that that one two punch is insane. Um, so I just I just don't trust that Chicago defense. So got to pick the Lions here. Yeah, so we'll see. Come on, Bears, get me get me a game up on Amanda here. I need it. I need to get back in this. That's our first disagreement of the week. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go to your Packers. I mean, what to say about this one? So I have been picking against the Packers correctly the past couple of weeks. Um, I'm tempted to take them here, but I don't know if I can. <laughs> um, I like having the consolation prize of like, oh, hey, my team lost, but I got my pick right. It's a it's a nice little like comfort thing for me. <laughs> um, but this game's interesting. I mean, Justin Herbert was taken sixth overall in um, 2020. Jordan Love was taken 26, both first rounders. I mean, Herbert has 58 starts since then, but Love is just doing his 11th career start. So, I mean, they're they're from the same draft class, but we have seen very different things out of these two quarterbacks. Justin Herbert is miles ahead. Um, but then that Chargers defense looks like they could give up a bunch of yards to that one-two punch you mentioned, Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon. They allowed 200 rushing yards and three touchdowns to the Lions last week. Yeah. Um, so I could see our run game taking over. Um, and then Christian Watson has had so much shit talked about him as the Packers wide receiver one. Um, I mean, his dad came to bat for him on social media this week. But I mean, any wide receiver one who is only completing 42% of their pass it like you've got to catch that like so I can I can see where the hate's coming from and I can also see where his dad is coming from saying like this team wasn't expected to win anything like it's a young team give them time to to settle in so I don't know I just mm -hmm. wh who are you taking here um well so uh, this is a spite game for me the Chargers uh ruined my weekend last Sunday and because the Chargers couldn't come through for me last week, I can't pick them this week. So give me the Packers at home. Uh, uh, that defense has stars all over it, but Brandon Staley has no clue how to coach it. Uh, you know, they had missed opportunities on offense as well. Keenan Allen is a dog. Quentin Johnson's getting it going, the rookie. Uh, but dropped passes, missed opportunities. Uh, the Chargers kind of beat themselves a little bit last week as well. Uh, Green Bay is starting to play better. They they showed signs of it against Pittsburgh in a tough game in Pittsburgh against a good defense. So at home, I think they could get some home cooking at Lambeau. It wouldn't surprise me if the Packers stole this one. I'm going Green Bay. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to stick with the Chargers. I would love to see the Packers put up more than 20 points. It's been exactly two months since they've scored more than 20 points. Um, yeah, I do have I, think that happened. I do have concerns though. Um, I'm pretty sure Justin Herbert is in the Illuminati. Um, <laughs> I mean, the the stat this week: the Chargers are 482 wins, 482 losses, and 11 ties all time. Herbert is 29 wins, 29 losses as a starter. And since he his first start, the total points scored and the total points allowed by the Chargers is 1,502. They are perfectly balanced and even. So. Yeah. I mean, I it's it's suspicious. That's all I'm saying. The, the definition of mediocrity, and uh, so it would make sense, right? You're four and five. You get to five and five this week, but this is, you know, I don't know. The Chargers are capable, but so is Green Bay, and the Packers don't want to fall to three and seven. It's an opportunity to get to four and six. They have been looking better. It's an opportunity to put up more, you know, twenty one points or more. Uh, against a bad defense and get that running game going. Um, it's a tough pick either way, but I'm going to go with Green Bay here because the Chargers uh, pissed me off last week. 
That's fair. Um, I will say the Packers have been giving glimpses of hope in every game. They'll take a lead. They'll have some amazing plays. And then the one thing you can trust from Green Bay this year is <laughs> Jordan Love to throw a goal line pick at the end of the game to lose it. So <laughs> I'm I'm going to keep riding on that. Uh, I'm, I'm trusting Jordan Love to do that again. So. That's the thing. You can be, you can struggle as a quarterback. You know, you can have growing pains. But the one thing you can't do and win is turn the ball over, especially late. And uh, yeah, and, I, and some of those picks are his fault. Some of them is the fact that our receivers are very young. Yeah. Um, so you know, like we've said numerous times, Packers fans came into the season with no expectations. So you know, if we finish at twenty percent games one, fine, cool, work out the kinks get to know your players better, you know, find who you, who you click with and sort it out for next year. I'm, I'm not expecting any dreams of a playoff situation this year, but I just want to see them clicking a little bit better. That's, that's what I want to see. Well, get to four and six and you'll start believing again. So I'm kind of hoping that's what I want is for you to start believing again. So let's get the Packers to four and six here. All right. I I like that you're rooting (laughs) for my team. It's weird. (laughs) Um, let's go five and five Raiders at the six and three Dolphins. The Raiders on a two game winning streak ever since they fired Josh McDaniels. Interim coach Antonio Pierce has provided a spark. Uh, Josh Jacobs is averaging 107 yards per game rushing since the change. So the Raiders, you know, they're feeling good, they're feeling optimistic. But also, both of those wins came against bad teams. The Giants and who was the other team they beat? The Jets. So, are the Raiders, is this newfound optimism and playing better and rookie quarterback Aiden O'Connell, is it good enough to go into Miami and beat the Dolphins? On top of that, the Dolphins are getting rookie running back Devon Achan back from injured reserve with a knee injury. So... This is an interesting game. What do you think happens here? So, I mean, the Dolphins have played three winning teams, and they have three losses in those games. I mean, Mike McDaniel's Dolphins are great against shitty teams and bad against good teams. So, you know, maybe this 500 matchup against the Raiders is kind of the game that they need to prove that they can finally win over a quote-unquote contender. Um, I mean, Antonio Pierce has been playing pretty well, you know, two wins, great for an interim coach. But the Dolphins are at home. They're better than the New York offenses that the Raiders defense handled. Um, I I see the Dolphins pulling this one off. I mean, the return of Achan, I think, is going to be great. I mean, he's been on IR, and he was coming in so red hot before that injury. Yeah. And then Raheem Mostert's been running well, too. So now you get the both of them, right? Um, and yeah, then and the, the Raiders have the fourth worst run D. They allow 135.6 yards per game on the ground. So, with that run game, you know, one two punch coming back in, I don't know. Yeah, and and don't don't ever call the Raiders a contender again. I'm I threw up in my mouth there for, for a second. I put it in quotations. I've seen a couple <laughs> people call them that this season or this week because you know they're 500 now and their division is you know a bit. <laughs> interesting at the moment um but that was that was in quotes for a reason <laughs> yeah i mean uh as far as picking are you still work, nauseous sorry sorry you take, <laughs> you take a couple deep breaths there bud <laughs> the dolphins should win this i think i'm gonna pick the dolphins they're the better team uh the raiders i like what the raiders are doing but at the end of the day i can't trust aiden o'connell um and I, you know, they're not that good of a team. Uh, five and five, two game winning streak. It's a cool story. That's going to come to an end at some point. And the Dolphins are, are they lose games against teams with winning records, not against teams that are 500. I think that's the line. And I think the Dolphins win this game at home. They're coming off their bye. They're pissed off after losing in Germany to the Chiefs. I think their offense bounces back and they have a good game and get a big win. Yeah, I'm I'm pulling for Miami here too. Um, the offense has been a little cold. Um, mm-hmm. I think is the word I would use, like a little stiff, a little out of sorts. Um, but I think they're going to be able to come back and pull this one off. Yeah, I'm. To be clear, I'm rooting for the Raiders, 
but I think the Dolphins are the more talented team that'll get the win. Uh, and uh, and uh, if they get the win, you know, that puts more pressure on the Bills and Jets. You know, it's an opportunity for the Dolphins to win that division, so they need to take advantage of it. Agreed. So let's uh, talk about a couple teams that we haven't really enjoyed watching so much this season until the past couple of weeks. Um, we've got the 2-8 and eight Giants coming into the 4-6 and six Commanders. And I have been hating on the Commanders all season, but they seem to be playing a little bit better lately. So that's kind of confounding for me. How do you feel about this matchup? Yeah, it's crazy that Sam Howell is leading the NFL in passing yards, uh, doing it kind of quietly on a under 500 team. This is a great matchup for the Commanders. Uh, I know they lost against the T Tyrod Taylor Giants in New York a couple weeks ago, but I don't see this game even being close. I think the Commanders run away with this one. I have no confidence in Tommy DeVito at all. And uh, the, this is who the Commanders are, though, I think, is they'll put up stats, they'll win some some games, they'll, you know, but they're not a playoff team. At their best is nine and eight. I think they're an eight and nine, seven and ten type of team. And so this is an opportunity to get to a five and six against, you know, it's a if you don't have a quarterback that can even throw the ball a little bit, how are you supposed to win? And the Giants don't have anything at quarterback with Tommy DeVito. So Commanders should win this one probably by double digits. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm more concerned about the O-lines and the defenses in this matchup. I mean, last week, both of those defensive coordinators should have been, I mean, mm -hmm. beating themselves up. I mean, the Commanders gave up 489 yards. That's the most they've given up since they've been called the Washington football team. And then yeah. Martindale for the Giants, I mean, oof, 640 yards to Dallas. Yeah, and when you're on the field all game against a good Cowboys offense and – you can't get anything out of your out of your own offense. That's tough on any defense when you have zero confidence in your offense and you're just out there play after play after play. Uh, I like Wink Martindale, but you know I agree the Giants' defense uh, is up against it right now, and I think the Commanders are coming in kind of hot and feeling themselves offensively, and they're pissed off about losing a game they felt they should have won against Seattle. So I think it's a good opportunity to get a bounce back win for Washington. Yeah, it's interesting that Sam Howell has the highest passing yards when um, he has total has forty total sacks that have been allowed um, on him. Yeah. So I mean, he's been getting beat up all season, but still throwing insanely well. Um, right now, he's on pace for setting an NFL record of being sacked ninety seven times in a season. Um, but the last three games, they've kind of improved. They've only allowed seven sacks on him. So. Um, I think the the change to Tyler Larson at center instead of Nick Gates um, seems to seems to have helped address that issue. Um, but yeah, I have to take the Commanders here. I mean, that that defense versus the NFL's worst offense. I just don't see any way that the Giants pull this off with Tommy DeVito. Yeah, and credit to Eric Bieniemy, he seems to be developing Sam Howell. You know, I mean, he's not the who I would want at quarterback, you know, so far, some turnovers, some inconsistencies, but he seems to be slightly getting better. You know, numbers speak for something, so. Yeah, um, speaking of numbers, a little look at some running backs in this game um, who are both in, in interesting situations. Um, Brian Robinson Jr. had a great game last week against Seattle. Um, he mm -hmm. put up some of his, his best career numbers. So, I mean, he should have a, another good week this week. Um, Washington might need to rely on that run game again. Um, and then on the other side of the ball, Saquon Barkley has now gone five straight games without a rushing touchdown. His yeah. longest drought so far is seven games. So a sixth game in that streak would tie for the second longest drought of his career. He needs to break off like a 70-yarder because if he doesn't, yeah. the offense isn't going anywhere, you know. And uh, I think defenses are stacking the box saying, Saquon's not going to beat us, and Tommy DeVito can't complete a pass further than five yards downfield. So, so yeah. So hopefully uh, Saquon <laughs> gets out of that, that you know, lull he's in and, and gets going. And I, I would love to see Brian Robinson Jr. have another great game. Yeah. Um, How about – Cowboys getting back-to-back -back easy opponents. They're at the 1-8 and eight Panthers. All I wrote in my notes for this game is blowout. 
that's my notes um blowout and cowboys to win um i mean this it's such a mismatched game like the cowboys are fourth in points allowed third in total defense i mean the panthers are ranked 29th and 30th in offense like this is just going to be disgusting and another you know 40 plus point blowout by the cowboys so yeah yeah but frank reich is retaking over play calling uh, yeah, didn't their one win come when he was not play calling? <laughs> yes, but we're not supposed to talk about that. We're just supposed just... to talk about how great of a offensive genius Frank Reich is with his one and eight Panthers. Uh, no, no, no. If he's the offensive genius, um, let's credit him for the. I mean, so what? He's he's play called six of their games, six of their nine, and he's zero and six this season. So let's uh, <laughs> let's leave it at that. Um, I think Tony Pollard is going to have a good game here. Um, he's, he's been a little low with his numbers this season. He only has 100 plus yard game this season back in week three. Um, I think he'll take off in this one. I would like to see some more numbers out of him. Um, so yeah, I don't, there, there's really nothing to say about this one. It's mismatched. It's going to be a blowout. Yeah. I think Cowboys win easily, uh, unless it's a game where the Cowboys are looking, you know, like just no show for some reason like they did against the Cardinals. But even the Cardinals had Josh Dobbs. Um, I think the Cowboys win this one easily, probably by 20-plus. And the Panthers are just a shit show, right? And you talk about putting Bryce Young in the terrible position to be successful when you've got Frank Reich and Thomas Brown and going back and forth and uncertainty on that offense, you know, no consistency week to week on play calling. You got a owner and David Tepper who's very hands on and and you know, it just seems like chaos over there in Charlotte with the Panthers and so nothing really to be confident about with them. And as a Bears fan, I hope they keep on losing so we get that number one overall pick because we need it. Yeah. I mean it's dysfunction, it's tense, it's messy. Um Cowboys are gonna run off with this one. Yeah, uh, let's move on to a better matchup. Um, we've got the three and six Titans at the six and three Jags. Um, I mean, we've seen some glimmers of beauty out of Will Levis and his, you know, two or let's see, how many games has he started so far? I think three now. Three now? Okay. So. Or two and a half, something like that. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. I know his last two games weren't as great as the first one. Um, and I mean, this is his his third straight game on the road. Um, so, you know, I could, I could see them, the Titans putting up a bit of a fight on this one. Um, but I do think Jacksonville is going to be the better team. Um, they just, they have so many different areas where they're just slightly better than the Titans, even with, you know, not, not counting the quarterback position. I mean, the offensive line, I think is better for the Jags. The Titans rookie Will Levis has been sacked 10 times over three games, um, Trevor Lawrence has been sacked quite a few this season, but they've been stepping up for the past couple of weeks. Uh, so I think the Jags have the advantage there. Um, I don't know. What's your take on this game? Yeah, I agree. I think that the Jags are the better team. They're at home. They're pissed off after getting their ass kicked by the 49ers in every way possible. I think the Jags are going to be they're going to be uh, intense in the locker room in that building this week coming into the game. And I think the Jags are going to bounce back in a big way. Um, I don't have much confidence in the Titans after Will Levis having that one game where he threw like four touchdowns, three of them de to DeAndre Hopkins. He's kind of come back down to earth in a big way. Didn't look very good last week against Tampa Bay at all. So I have – very little faith in the Titans and I am a I've been talking about the Jags all season long and they disappointed me last week against San Francisco but I expect them to bounce back and win this by double digits at home yeah um the the interesting part of this game is that the Titans have not scored a touchdown um on the road they've only scored two in six games on the road this season um, wow. they're completely defeated every game they played on the road. They played three games at home. They've won all three of them. Um, so I think this is a situation where they're going to rely on Derek Henry, um, for the, the points here. I think maybe they'll be able to get a touchdown on the road. Cause it's, it's been a bit of a drought for them. Um, and I mean, they've got the, the fifth best rushing 
um, defense that they're playing against. So it's it's going to be an interesting matchup there for sure. Yeah, they're going to need three Derrick Henry rushing touchdowns to get this one off and maybe a passing touchdown from him as well. Uh, I just don't see it. I don't think a rookie quarterback, Will Levis, has much success against Josh Allen coming off the edge, getting pressure on him. Um, so I'm going to go, you know, I'm pretty confident in the Jags in this one. Yeah, it's interesting, though, because a lot of people thought, you know, the Jags would put up more of a fight um, in their last matchup. And that was a that was a pretty tough game for them. They lost 34 to three against the Niners. So I can see them coming in pretty pissed off in this one and yeah. uh, trying to to make up for that last loss. Yeah. Yeah. Try to put up 30 plus on them and get that offense rolling again. It's a pretty good offense. So to be held to three points, you know, they're going to take that personally. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, what looked like a challenging schedule for them coming down the line. So after this game with the Titans, they go to Houston and then they play the Bengals and the Browns and the Ravens. Well, now the Bengals and the Browns are a bit less competitive with their quarterback situations. So if they can pull off a couple of wins here, they can kind of glide into the that stretch where they play the Buccaneers and the Ravens and, and you know, put up some wins and fix their numbers a little bit. Yeah, and... uh you know, if they take care of business, that shouldn't be really any challenge in that division. But if they lose some games they aren't supposed to, if they lose this one, if they drop a game to the Browns without their star quarterback, then uh, the Colts are 500, you know, and who knows? So you can't and – and the Texans are 5-4. and four, So you can't fuck around if you're Jacksonville. Only a one-game lead right now. And I believe they lost the head-to-head -head against Houston as well. So Jacksonville shouldn't be feeling like they got it in the bag. They still got to pro prove a lot of people uh, right or wrong, however, which way you are on that side. Yeah, yeah I absolutely agree with that. So we're both going to take the Jags in that one. And, I mean, you've mentioned the Texans a few times. Let's move on to the 2-8 and eight Cardinals at the 5-4 and four Texans. Um, so the Texans are looking to kind of keep that, that streak going – stay above 500, kind of assert themselves in the division a bit. What's your take on this game? I actually really like this game. I'm going to be paying attention to this one. It's a fun game to watch. You got Kyler Murray back from injury, long-awaited return of Kyler Murray, and he looked great last week. Uh, he looked like he has been, you know, healthy, never got hurt. So Kyler Murray against C.J. Stroud, and C.J. Stroud, you know, has been nothing short of special these last two weeks. So this is an elite, a lot of fun quarterback matchup here. Um, the Texans are the better team, absolutely, but this could be a good game, and I'm going to be watching it closely. I mean, everyone should be watching C.J. Stroud from here on out just to see if he can keep this up because if he does, I mean, he's in the conversation to win MVP as a rookie. Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy to to think about that. I mean, the last time a rookie won MVP was Jim Brown in 57. Yeah, um, it just doesn't and, happen. Yeah, and since then, only one rookie has ever even been in the top three of voting over the past 35 years, and that was Randy Moss in 98. But right. I think he has to be in the conversation. Yeah, right now, absolutely. He's absolutely top five, for sure. So, I mean, if he can keep that up, and it's interesting, too, because, I mean, right now, must-see TV, you know, you have to watch his games because he's amazing. He's putting on performances week after week. CJ Stroud is that is that guy. But if you think back a couple years ago, before the injuries, before the Cardinals kind of rebuild and, you know, a lot of locker room changes. I mean, Kyler Murray back in 2021, he, they I mean, he led the Cardinals to a 7-0 and start. So it's yep. interesting to see both of these you know, young quarterbacks who have come in and done amazing things. And then this matchup should be great. I mean, looking at the numbers, their score, their records right now, two and eight, like, okay. But they're a different team when Kyler Murray's on that field. He ran circles last week. He looked so good. He looked so comfortable. It was a beautiful comeback win. Um, so I expect this one to be a very interesting game. Yeah, I'm going to pick the Texans to win at home and CJ Stroud to be clutch again. But this is another game that could come down to the wire. It could be a one-score game, and maybe C.J. Stroud has to be clutch again. Yeah, I um, I was kind of on the fence about this one because, I mean, Kyler Murray had a great game last week. C.J. Stroud has been really clutch. I think it could be a really good matchup. Um, I don't trust the Cardinals' defense as much, 
And the fact that um, the Texans coach, uh, D'Amico Ryans, kind of knows Kyler Murray from his days as the um, Niners defensive coordinator. Yeah. I think, I think maybe that it's going to give the Texans a bit more of an edge as well. So I have to take the Texans here. All right. Yeah. Um, I agree. That should be a fun game, though. Either way, not a game that a lot of people are going to assume that it'll be fun to watch, but trust me, it will be. So um, let's go uh, Bucks at 49ers. The four and five Bucks at the six and three. 49ers both teams ended losing streaks last week Niners feeling a lot better uh after ending theirs in a blowout fashion against Jacksonville and the Titans defense bounced back uh or the the Bucks defense bounced back last week and uh and beat the Titans and uh, looked a lot better as well so in San Francisco with Chase Young and Nick Bosa it's hard to pick against the 49ers here. Uh, what do you think? I mean, Tampa Bay's scrappy. I think they've got a lot of passion. I can see them putting up a fight, but I can't see San Francisco's defense letting them pull off a win here. I mean, not after how bad they made the Jags look last week. As much as I would love Baker Mayfield, I'm going to root for Baker Mayfield the whole game. Um, he's so fun to watch when he's pissed off. And, you know, after that win last week, they're they're probably – feeling themselves a bit, probably feeling a little bit more in sync. So I'm going to be pulling for Tampa Bay, but I just, you know, I think the Niners are going to pull this off. I think they're the better team, uh, but it hopefully will be a fun game to watch. Yeah, I think it actually could be a good game. Like Tampa Bay is not a pushover. They're not going to get blown out like Jacksonville did, I don't think. I think it'll be competitive. I think Baker is going to give it all he's got. Mike Evans is one of the best receivers in the game still. Uh, Their defense looked a lot better last week. Brock Purdy, even in the bounce back against Jacksonville, threw a couple passes that could have been intercepted. And we've seen that be a problem with him this year. So if Brock Purdy or the 49ers turn the ball over at all and uh, the Bucs can put up, you know, the defense can keep the the 49ers score down a little bit, this could be a one-score game, a, a good battle. And that's what I'm rooting for. But... I think in the end, the 49ers do enough to get the win at home. Yeah, there's there's some interesting matchups in this one. I mean, the they're both tied um, for third in, le- in the league um, in their turnover margin. They've been winning the turnover battle in games. But watching the games, Brock Purdy throws a lot of almost picks. Yeah. And we've seen Baker historically be a little turnover crazy, but this year he's been he's been pretty clean with his throws. Um, so I could see the Buccaneers kind of pulling some picks out of Brock Purdy in this one. And then also if the Bucs can continue how dominant they've been in the red zone defense, Tampa Bay is first in the league at keeping teams out of the red zone inside the 20. Okay. So I can see that be a being a bit of a challenge. So I could I could see an upset happening here. Um, And like the Niners, they've been sixth over the season in scoring in the red zone, but their past three games, they're only scoring on 40% of those red zone trips. So that's going to be an interesting aspect of the game to to watch that red zone defense versus that kind of shaky red zone offense. Um, So pulling for the Bucks, but choosing the 49ers on this one. Yeah, we agree on that one. Um, Let's talk about Jets, Bills, your AFC team, Buffalo, kind of reeling. They've lost three of their last four, uh, an unacceptable loss against Denver on Monday night. Um, And they're they're seeing their playoff chances kind of slipping a little bit. And if the Dolphins take care of business uh, against Vegas, you know, there's a lot of pressure on Buffalo. They pretty much need to win the rest of their games. They don't have really – any room for error the rest of the season. Uh, How confident are you? This is a great matchup. The Jets and the Bills, both teams desperate for a win and a divisional battle. I think this is going to be a hard-hitting, hard-fought game, and uh, turnovers are going to decide it. And Josh Allen better take care of the football on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, this will be Joe Brady's first game as the interim offensive coordinator. So we'll see how, you know, how that works out for Josh Allen. But, I mean, those those interceptions are going to be an issue. I mean, week one, he had three interceptions and a fumble. 
Um, yeah. So how how that offense is looking under Joe Brady, and then you know that defense allows the third fewest yards per play. Um, so they're they're gonna have a very tall order to pull this one off. And Josh Allen has his lowest career passer rating um, versus the Jets of any team in the NFL. Wow. So he knows going into this one that it's gonna be a mind game. He's fully aware. Um, his total QBR against them is or a passer rating is seventy nine. So yeah. he's he's got his work cut out for him, but he's not coming going to take it lightly, I don't think. Um, but then again, the Jets' offense—they've gone two straight games without a touchdown. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it, it's going to be—I think it's a low-scoring, hard-fought game. I don't think the Bills have a ton of success against this defense. It's not just Sauce Gardner, DJ Reed, Jordan Whitehead is also you know making plays, and you know. The Jets are not going to take this game lightly because they're just as desperate as Buffalo is. Josh Allen needs to play the best game of his uh, season, and he needs to use his legs. I think he's been re- relying so much on his arm and trying to make you know, big play after big play downfield. He needs to use his legs, and uh, but that also puts him more at risk against a hard-hitting defense as well. So this is a true... This is a must-watch game, in my opinion. This is going to be great football. Yeah, and I mean, I think the the Bills are going to be a little bit more pissed off in this one after the stupid way that they lost to the Broncos last week. I mean, that was an idiotic way. to. They won the game, and then there was a stupid penalty, and then they lost the game. Um, So I can can see them coming into this one kind of heated. I mean, both coming off losses, but I think – I think their loss was a bit more aggravating than the Jets' loss to the Raiders. So yeah, I think they'll, they'll have a bigger chip on their shoulders. They should have come into that Denver game on Monday night heated. You know what I mean? They That was yeah. a must win. And for them to not show up to that one and lose it in the way they did with a turnover on, like, the opening play. So embarrassing. And, and the 12 men on the field for that field goal kick and all the turnovers and the Stephon Diggs drama, right? and then you fire the offensive coordinator, I think that the Bills might be having some real issues internally. And uh, this is a great opportunity for the Jets to get a statement win, get back to 500, and stay alive in the Aaron Rodgers, you know, comeback attempt. So this the storylines are all over this game, and I just want to mentally prepare you and Bills fans and NFL fans, are you ready for a playoffs without the Bengals and the Bills? I mean, it's possible. I mean, after that game against the Broncos, I don't know if the Bills deserve to make it to the postseason. That was embarrassing. Yeah. yeah, but at the same time, if you can play a clean game, get a big win, they'll they'll celebrate like they won the Super Bowl if they can win this game because that will keep them close with the Dolphins. And they need that desperately. They need, you know, and and they're going to be rooting for the Raiders to upset the Dolphins, but they got to start somewhere. I expected them to start against Denver last week, and they didn't do it. And so now there's a lot of questions about this Buffalo team and a a game they should win at home. Can they do it? I can't wait for this one. So who are you picking officially in this one? Uh, Oh, (laughs) I've been so caught up in – the fun aspect of it. I think this yeah. one's going to be a toss up depending on which version of these teams shows up. Um, I I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, I know who you're going to pick. So I'm taking the Jets. Okay. I just, I mean, I got to pick them. I'm so pissed off about how they lost to the Broncos. Like it was, yeah. it was idiot, like 12 men on the field. They had the game yeah. one. Well, you motherfuckers can't count to 11. Like, come on. So. Yeah, I'm I'm ready for them to to make up for that one a little bit. I picked the Bills to win that game against Denver, right? Yeah, we both did. Yeah. I was furious. Yeah, and uh, you know, I've given well, the Bills the, plenty of the media, about huh? the media talking about how Russell, you know, did everything and he you put all these pieces together. Like, no, fuck that. Like that was not that was not a game Russell Wilson won. That was a game that Buffalo lost. So, well, you're talking to the, you're talking to the wrong person on that one. Broncos country, let's ride. So don't even get me started with that one. We're, oh, no, we're no I'm, I'm not. 
I'm not saying anything bad about the Broncos. I'm just saying the media focusing on how what Russell Wilson did in that game. Russell Wilson, like he had nothing to do with the stupid penalties that gave the game away at the end. It's true, but he's also playing better. Oh no, he is absolutely. I, 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 you know, we'll talk about him in a minute. All right. The Bills did lose on that game, 100%. Yeah. Self-inflicted mistakes, oh, yeah. absolutely. My issue is not with the Broncos playing better. I mean, they've beat the Chiefs this season. I, you know, the Bro- Russell Wilson has definitely pulled his head out of his ass, and he's playing much better. Um, my concern was the media give it, uh, attesting the, the whole win to Russell Wilson and the offense when it was special teams and then a mistake on the Bills that won them the game. That, that was my only yeah. thing there. Yeah, national media, all they do is run with narratives, and it's always about the quarterbacks, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, that and, you know, I guess we just make up shit on the sidelines now, too, so. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's move on before I get too heated on that. Um, <laughs> Seattle, 6-3, and three, come into the Rams, who are 3-6. and six. Uh, Matt Stafford is expected to return after his thumb injury um, in Week 8, which is great news for the Rams team. I mean, it's been a pretty rough ride without him in there. Um, so there, the play ro- playoff race has been a bit of a mess for the for the Rams. How do you think this game is going to play out? Um, I think this is a great game. It's a hard-fought divisional battle in L.A. Uh, give me Seattle on the road. I like this Seahawks team. They bounced back. Uh, got a big win last week. I know it wasn't perfect, allowing, you know, as many points, allowing it to be as close as it was to the commanders, but um, some people are doubting the Seahawks. I'm not one of those guys. I believe in the Seahawks team. They're very talented. As long as Geno Smith protects the football, there's no reason why this team can't go into the playoffs and even win a playoff game, So, or maybe even two. You know, I love Kenneth Walker, DK Metcalf. Jackson Smith and Jigba, of course, Tyler Lockett. He might not play in this game. That could be a big loss. But I still think uh, I don't trust the Rams. I think the Seahawks are more talented. And I don't think necessarily putting in an old Matthew Stafford just makes the Rams the better team or gives them the win here. So give me Seattle on the road. Yeah, I mean, I there's, there's no way you can pick against Seattle in this game. Matt Stafford is coming back, but... They well, they did beat them in week one. We know week one is generally a, a crazy week, and players haven't really sorted their their connections out. The only two other teams the Rams have beat this season are the Colts in overtime mm-hmm. back in week four, and then the Cardinals. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not impressed by the Rams at all, with or without Stafford. Um, Seattle's going to run away with this one. Um, I mean that Rams offense has managed only 187 yards. Um, in their loss to the Packers without Stafford, but that was the the like the best loss they've had, and that was against the Packers, who we know are garbage. Um, I mean, they're on a they've lost three in a row now. Um, that Seattle defense is gonna make them look bad, I think. Yeah, and uh, Seattle's gonna be pissed off about that Week One loss as well, and use that for motivation for this one. The Rams could steal it. You know, you never know with divisional rivalries. Uh, uh, and, the, and the Rams are three and six. They need a win desperately. But the Seahawks, I'm going with the more talented team, the team that should win. And I, I trust the Seahawks. So give me Seattle on the road for a big win. Get to seven and three. They'd feel a lot better about that than six and four. Yeah. Um. Something that's interesting, though, is with Matt Stafford coming back from an injury and Seattle um, – having such a good front line, I think that they're going to have to rely, the Rams are going to have to rely on their run game. Um, Seattle's defense has allowed the most rushing yards per game over the past three games in the NFL. So Daryl mm-hmm. Henderson might might be enjoying that a little bit. Yeah, uh, a little bit. Give me Kenneth Walker to outgain him. Uh, yeah. I like, you know, the Seahawk run game with, with Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet is it's beautiful. Nasty. Uh, but the Rams might, you know, if the Rams are looking for any kind of way to put up some points, it's they need some uh, effectiveness through the run game. Absolutely. Yeah, especially since the Rams have allowed 21 sacks this season. Um, I can see with the way Seattle's defense is, I can see Stafford needing to to step out and go to the injury tent at least once during this game. Yeah, and shout out uh, Boye Mafe has been balling out lately as well. 
Yeah, I think he's probably going to sack him a couple times. Yeah. That, so, that uh, line is questionable at best. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go Sunday night football. Uh, speaking of the Denver Broncos at home, battle of winning streaks here. This is a great game, actually. A sneaky, great game. The Vikings come in red hot on five-game winning streak. Josh Dobbs has been absolutely heroic. And it, you know, two start or two opportunities in Minnesota, uh, delivering them big wins to keep the winning streak alive. Denver themselves is on a three game winning streak. We all saw the big win over the Bills on uh, Monday Night Football last week in Denver. Two red hot teams. Who do you think gets this win? No, I, I kind of want to hear your take on this. I want to hear you go off on Broncos country before I say my pick. Um, I yeah. mean, Josh Dobbs has been a lifeguard. He has come in and saved the Vikings at quarterback. He's been playing so well for them. That's a situation where you found the next guy up and he is playing so well. Um, yeah. so, I mean, two of those five game win streak are attested to him solely. I mean, he's, he's played so well for them. Um, the Broncos are on their first three game win streak since September of 2021. Um, yeah. They've had nine takeaways in their last two games against the chiefs and the bills which is more than they had in their first seven games combined. Um, so I think it comes down to if the Vikings are going to turn the ball over, which Josh, Josh Dobbs is pretty good about not doing. Um, I could see Denver running away with this one, but it's too, uh, I don't know. The Vikings offense is better than Denver's offense, but I think Denver's defense might be better than Minnesota's defense. Yeah, this is two teams that are playing really good football right now. Us on both sides of the ball like Josh Dobbs has come in and provided an absolute spark we'll see if Justin Jefferson plays in this game or not too that's a big uh, question mark um, the Vikings defense is a lot better under Brian Flores and uh, you know they're playing excellent football right now they can beat anybody the way they're playing right now on a five game winning streak and the, the whole team is feeling the confidence like let's just keep stacking wins but for Denver, it's the same thing. That defense is so much improved. Everyone remembers giving up 70 to the Dolphins and barely beating the Bears. I believe it was like 34-31. Um, but they're playing a lot better football right now. Like you said, they beat the Chiefs. They beat the Bills. Those are two, quote-unquote, supposed to be contenders in the AFC. Uh, and Russell Wilson is absolutely playing better. He's protecting the football uh that touchdown pass he threw along the sideline I, I think it was on fourth down to Cortland Sutton was absolutely beautiful it was vintage Russ the way he spun around to avoid the sack and then placed the ball in the perfect spot for Cortland Sutton who's a excellent wide receiver to make that catch that toe drag catch in the end zone and then also uh when Russell Wilson feels the pressure collapsing on him when he steps up and does that little flip pass to the running back just to avoid the sack, get the ball in the hands of a playmaker and pick up nine or ten yards, that's huge uh, to keep drives alive. So I can't wait for this game. This is going to be a great Sunday night football game. And give me the Broncos at home to snap the Vikings' five-game winning streak. Okay. Okay. I'm so Justin Jefferson starting in this game. Um, if he is back yeah, and he's playing, big. I think yep. the Vikings could run away with this one. Um, I had Broncos question mark written, but I'm going to switch to the Vikings now that you're so high on on the Broncos. Um, <laughs> the one thing I'm concerned about in particular is that that Vikings rush has not been great on the season if you look at their total numbers for their for madison and i mean dobbs is their third best rusher on the season and he's been there for how long um so yeah, yeah their, their running game is not great it hasn't been great on the season but that broncos defense ranks dead last in run stop win rate um they allowed 192 yards and rushing to the bills so i think this is the week that 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 rush that run gets going and i mean Dobbs can can move on his legs so I think he's gonna run he's gonna run over that defense so I'm gonna take the Vikings on this one yeah I don't see any team running away with this I think it's hard fought I think the winner wins by three points I think it's that okay. type of game uh both defense 
defenses I trust. Uh, both quarterbacks are playing Houdini and Miracle Worker. And uh, Josh Dobbs, I think this is my mindset here. Josh Dobbs' heroics have to come to an end at some point. He's not Jesus Christ. He can't walk on water. At some point, Josh Dobbs has been a career backup to the until this year. And we laughed when the Cardinals named him the starter. And he overachieved there and had the Cardinals more competitive than they should have been. He's coming to Minnesota and been ridiculous. But something tells me that's going to come to an end. And maybe it's the Denver defense that can, which slowed Josh Allen, right? Maybe, and Patrick Mahomes, maybe that Denver defense can slow Josh Dobbs. Uh, but two excellent teams. And it's going to be a great matchup. I think I could see it being the Broncos 19, Vikings 16 type of game. Yeah, I think it's going to be a close game. It's just going to depend on, you know, who wins that that turnover. Yeah. Whoever, if yeah, if Dobbs turns the ball over trying to force it to Justin Jefferson, if Russell Wilson does one of his patented stupid mistakes, whether it's a, f- a fumble loss or a reckless throw, Turnovers are going to be key in this game, absolutely. Possessions are going to be very, very valuable, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Got to control the ball for sure. Yeah. And then uh, it doesn't get any better than Monday night, huh? Super Bowl rematch. I was going to say, all right, let's move to the the game of the week. Monday night football, riveting stuff. I mean, we love a Super Bowl rematch. This is only the, I believe, ninth ninth time in history yeah that um teams who met in the super bowl play again in the following season defending super bowl champs have won six of those nine uh matches or eight matches that we've had so far so um i mean the 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 super bowl score was 38 to 35 so we know it was a high scoring shootout close game um i i don't think we're gonna see a high scoring game this time around yeah it's interesting i mean it could be, but yeah, the Chiefs' defense is so much better. Uh, the Eagles' defense is great as well. It's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be very hard fought. I agree. I think it's a lower scoring game um, than the Super Bowl. Probably both teams in the twenties, uh, but it's gonna be huge. I mean, you remember the Cowboys Eagles game where it was a game of absolute inches? You know, I think that's what this one is. Like, it's going to come down to who makes the plays at the end of the game. I don't think anyone thinks that this isn't going to come down to the fourth quarter, the final two minutes. Yeah, so I I absolutely agree with you. I think it's going to be a close, hard-fought game. I mean, Jalen Hurts has been a little slower in the past couple games. Um, that left knee has been bugging him for several weeks. So he's averaging just 21 rushing yards over the past three games compared to double that um, over the first six. Um, yeah. But he's had time to rest um, coming off a of bye week. I mean, both teams are coming off a of bye week. So it's it's going to be interesting. Um, that Chiefs team ranks fifth in pass defense. Um, so Jalen Hurts might need to to stay on his feet a bit to get some of those yards in this game. Yeah, it's this is really like a Super Bowl rematch. Like both teams off the bye, uh, you know, both teams, the best two records in football. Um, a lot on the line here, especially bragging rights wise. Uh, I don't think anyone is worried about either of these teams missing the playoffs or or not winning their division. So this is all about bragging rights. Um, and p- potentially if they meet again in the Super Bowl, who has home, you know, home field, right? Or not home field, but like, you know what I mean? Uh, uh it, it's just it's gonna be a great game. I think that Arrowhead crowd. It's going to be loud as hell, and that might help their defense, you know, and make things difficult for Philly's offense. What do you think here? I think I'm going to take the Chiefs at home. I think I would pick whatever the home team is because, I mean, we've we've seen some rough games for for both offenses. Um, I mean, but the defenses have have played really well. I mean, we have some of the. Uh, it's going to be such a good matchup. This one could go either way. Um, yeah. But I, I don't know, something about the Chiefs at home. So we've disagreed on three games, right? Uh, let me double check. I think it's Vikings, Broncos. 
Uh, it's four so far. Um, Bears four? at Lions, Chargers at Packers, Jets at Bills, and Vikings Broncos. Okay. Well, well I want to take the lead, so give me five. And it's a buffer. If I lose one of them, I can still get to four. Okay. Uh, <laughs> give me the Eagles. This is a – I don't like the Chiefs. I'm going to be rooting against the Chiefs. Uh, uh, Taylor Swift is probably going to be there. Another reason to root against the Chiefs. Oh, God. Yeah, um, got her. <laughs> And I, 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 I picked just watch the, fucking football, Jesus. I know, right? I can't stand it. I picked the Eagles to win the Super Bowl, and they disappointed me, but it was right there for the taking. And oh, I yeah. blame Jonathan Gannon for a, a big reason why they couldn't defend that stupid play call that the Chiefs ran twice in the red zone. Um, I think the Eagles use that as motivation that lost the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Uh, give me the Eagles on the road in Arrowhead. It's a tough, t- tough ask, but I think they get it done. And turnovers again are going to play huge, and a Mahomes turnover or two could decide the outcome of this game. Yeah, I think um, if the Eagles were at home, I would absolutely take the Eagles. I'm like 51 percent Eagles, 49 percent Chiefs, but yeah. we've seen the Chiefs play to the level of their opponent and I think the Chiefs are taking this game very seriously I mean I know they lost to the Broncos they're probably pissed off still um I could see them finally getting that offense clicking and just off on the right foot um so I I feel like I should take the Eagles but I kind of want to I who's the what like who is the the underdog of this game uh let me look here real quick I don't really pay attention to the line I kind of just pick off of my my gut and I'm generally pretty right I'm at 64% uh, for the season, so. Chiefs by two and a half. Okay. And it, it's, it really comes down to home field, right? If it yeah. was in Philly, I think they would be the favorite. And you know that home Arrowhead crowd is going to be rocking and loud. Yeah, crazy. I mean, this game has been circled on people's calendars since the schedule came out. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. So we'll disagree and that one, we've got five picks different. It's going to be a great game of football, guys. I mean, I know some of these records don't look the best. I mean, we've got the the two and eight Cardinals, but I mean, Kyler Murray's back. We've got Justin Fields coming back this week. We're going to see a resurgence of some of those injuries that went out at the beginning of the season coming back in these games. So ignore the records. Look at the team and the players who are on the field because, I mean, these games are going to look better than their records in a couple of situations. Absolutely. It's going to be, you know, again, uh, people try to sleep on some of these weeks and say, oh, not that good a matchup. So another gr- great week of matchups and some under the radar, really good games. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I think we get two excellent games. Thursday night was great until the injury. Uh, but Sunday night and Monday night are going to be great football. And so can't wait for these matchups. And I'm excited to go. I think we go four to one head to head, and I tie you up on the on our picks this week. Cute. Okay. We'll we'll see uh, when you're wrong. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know that my Jets are gonna beat your Bills. Yeah, like, you think the Packers are gonna win though, so I'm not gonna trust anything <laughs> out of them now. And we know the Bears are gonna go into Detroit and get that win. So, no, that's my one buffer. That's the one that's not going to happen, probably, is my Bears. Your Packers are getting a win. Stop hating on your cheeseheads and start believing. I'm not hating on them. I'm being realistic. <laughs> I've I've picked them pretty accurately this season, though, honestly. Yeah. So. No, I mean, they need it. They need to get to four and six. Three and seven is going to have a lot of fans pretty upset. Yeah, but it's a rebuild year. I don't know if the... I don't really care about the record. I just want to see improvements with Christian Watson connecting with Jordan Love. I want to see improvements. I mean, Luke uh, Musgraves has been looking a lot better. Our baby mm-hmm. tight end, you know, he's coming into his own. That's all I want to see. I want to see them clicking and working out some kinks. Um, we've oh, got yeah. some defensive players who have left the team. Defense. I mean, Rasul Douglas was a, a bit of a hit there. Um, but I want to see, you know, the rookies stepping in and and kind of coming to their own and finding their groove. That's all I want to see this season. Well, and uh, I'm going to be critical of Matt LaFleur. I mean, for the love of Christ, can we put up 21 points in a game, right? This is the week to do it. Yeah, it's been two months. It's time. Tick tock. And then uh, I'm excited as hell for Justin Fields to get back. I don't care if the Lions are 7-2. and two. Anytime the Bears play the Lions, it's go time. 
and uh, Justin Fields being healthy, no excuses. Let's go get a win that nobody sees coming, but the Lions are tad, hashtag overrated. So let's get that dub, Bears. All right. Well, thanks everyone for listening to us uh, bicker tonight. It was a bit more heated than (laughs) usual. Normally we only have like three or four games we disagree on. So, so five is a, I think a new record for us. So it'll be exciting to see how the games play out. Well, I'm getting a little desperate. I'm tired. I'm not happy being down four games last week kind of fucked me up. So I told you I was good at this shit. There's a reason my husband (laughs) calls me a warlock. (laughs) But we appreciate all the support. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Check out our Jerry Hairston interview this week. It was a lot of fun talking some baseball, talking some NBA, different topics with Jerry Hairston Jr. Uh, And we got some more on deck. So stay tuned. Hit that subscribe and uh, follow along all season long. Good shit as always, Amanda. And have a great week, guys. Peace out.